All right, it's 106.7 K Rock, Kara Q. I am Stryker, and sitting right next to me, they just played our stage, Jaguar Ma, and uh, that was really cool. Uh, Gabe, Jono, Jono, and Jack. Jack. Are you absorbing what's going on in the crowd? Girls dancing in the pool, the crowd in front of you, really vibing it. Could you feel that energy from the stage? Yeah, definitely. Oh, very definitely. nice. It was really nice as well because one of the songs, like "Come Save Me," we played the Pachanga Boys remix which it like had sort of had one of its debuts at Burning Man, which is like, and we're probably the closest we've ever been to Burning Man right. festival, so it was just kind of cool. Nice. In the same kind of environment, I guess. In some way. Joan, I have a question for you. I know you guys are from Australia. Yeah. Was the reason to go to the UK for straight musical reasons? You've seen other bands from in the States. I've known bands that maybe things weren't going how they wanted. They went to the UK and really things took a turn, even though they've always had the great skill as a band. What was your reasoning for that? Um, there are a number of factors. Uh, the main ones, yeah, the music. Like when we put out Come Save Me, most of the response and reaction initially came from London. Like there's a bunch of labels and people and and um, and, and um, there was just a lot of energy uh, around the track that was all coming from London. So when we went over there, we ended up uh, meeting um, guys that became our managers and uh, found a label there and so it all just kind of happened there so we were like okay let's let's base ourselves here because there's a lot of activity around europe and just That's makes cool. it easier does that cause any resentment uh for your hometown fans and people that know you or it's just part of the whole cycle of people, the band i think people get more excited about it in a way in australia they're like you know our boys are doing well uh, overseas it's right. kind of you know it's like you know sending up a, a football team away or something <laughs> yeah right we're in the Premier League now. Yeah, <laughs> we made it to the Premier League. And you've, you got a hat trick. Yeah, so we got far. a hat trick. Yeah. LL Cool J would love your hat, by the way. Oh, yeah. He would Thank love you. that hat. Mama said yeah. knock you out. So I have a question on your Twitter recently. All you wrote was, miss you, Kurt. Um, so obviously that's for Kurt Cobain. Your first uh, remembrance, that's a word, of Nirvana. I mean, you must have been so young, and how'd you get the music, and what was it, and is Nirvana an inspiration as they conducted themselves as a band and musically? Yeah, definitely. definitely. For all, all of us. It's probably one of the few bands that all of us agree. Yeah, we, we, have, like, like <laughs> we have like quite a broad taste like between the three of us of what we like, but Nirvana is one of those kind of, you know, common threads. And I don't know. I mean, I didn't. I yeah. I didn't actually experience any of Nirvana firsthand because by the time he was gone, I was just in preschool, so I don't really remember it that. But like my older brother and like they were really into Nirvana. And what were some of those records your parents were listening to that you were like, I've had enough of this? Uh, funnily enough, um, Cat Stevens, Cat Stevens, <laughs> even the Tiller Man, which I, I which has had a kid. resurgence, and, and we yeah. just yeah, we just got it again recently, and we're, okay. we're, we're like appreciating it again, like full circle. Got it. Um, but yeah, I remember like uh, my parents playing that and Graceland, Paul Simon, mm -hmm. just nonstop, and nice. you know I loved it as a kid, but then Nirvana came along, and I was like, oh, this is that's this yours is, now. This is mine, right? I'm going to Graceland, Graceless, Memphis, Tennessee. I'm going to Graceland. Nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jack, how do you know these guys? Um, when did you become part of the band? Were you there from the inception of Jaguar Ma? No, I, I came in. Oh, that's loud. I came in um, about towards the end of the album making process. We all used to play in bands together in Sydney um, when we were teenagers. So we kind of used to play with each other, and that's how we. And me and Gab actually used to have a little side project group together. And then um, I moved to London about five years ago, four years ago. And then these guys were recording the album in France. And I think I was the only bass player they knew that was in the Northern Hemisphere at that time. <laughs> That's Thank not God. True. So you're in the band by default. Yeah. I wouldn't say that. Aww. I wouldn't say that at all. You're awesome on no, stage. No, it's fine. I'm, I have no qualms about it. Okay. <laughs> I got this job by default. So you and I are in the same league, pretty much. I feel you. There you go. Thank you yeah. very much. So what are the plans? Uh, you already did your Coachella set, and you, you came to the K-Rock house and did this set. Are you going out of town until next week? Are you going to be playing shows? You're going to lay low in the desert and go play bridge with old people? <laughs> <laughs> we are going to San Francisco. San Francisco. Oh, okay. We're playing with Miss Mister, which is going to be real fun. And then we play Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara, yeah. And then, and then we're back here. Great, back great towns, great cities for music. Yeah. And uh, I know you haven't been to LA played. You haven't played a whole bunch. Uh, we will welcome you anytime with the most open of arms, just so you guys know. Oh, yes, please. Okay. Yeah. Well, right. we we played last time we played. We played at the El Rey. El Rey, right? We had an amazing time. We that's love, one. Yeah. That's one of our favorite gigs of all time. Was yeah, El Rey right, okay. in LA? And Definitely. what what was it about it? Is it the history of the place you were at, or was it just the vibe of the crowd? 
it's just one of those things you can't put your finger on. It's yeah. just okay. Everything worked that night. And it was the crowd was incredible. It was like the last show of that little US run, and I think it felt like a victory homecoming. It was the last show of that year. Yeah, it was actually year, yeah. Right. The, the, and, and when it was a big year, we played. We worked. We played about hundred shows, and the El Rey was like the last show for 2013 and that's so yeah we went out with a big bang cool yeah. good all right well you guys are doing great as i mentioned on the stage there i mean everyone is gravitating towards you guys and the album and uh, we appreciate it it's not easy you come to the house and it's a real setup and you guys just sounded so good so jaguar ma guys thank you so much for being here thank really you very much. Thanks, all right, thank you k-rock yeah you got it the k-rock coachella house everybody